Hi, and welcome to the uh, general overview of uh, Camera Path uh, 3.0. We just uh, released um, on the 4th of February, I believe. And uh, I'm going to go through a basic overview of uh, Camera Path 3 for new users. If you are um, a current user of um, Camera Path 2 and are moving uh, on up to 3, I suggest you check out our video um, on what's new, which is more geared to sort of showing you how Camera Path 3 is different to 2. Um, but this is uh, for, for new users, and um, we're going to go through just the general um, idea of, of, of everything. So when you install Camera Path, it's all kept inside the Camera Path 3 folder. And here we have uh, open the example scene, um, the on-rails shooter example that I created. Um, We'll just go through the uh, camera path. Um, the first thing you want to do if you want to create a new camera path, though, is um, go to create new camera path under game object. And this will create this a new camera path uh, for your scene. You can see one here. Uh, I mean, um, but the on rail shooter camera path, you know, we have a lot of things already in it, so we can, we can have a look at this. So um, camera path generally consists of two components. We have the camera path animator script which deals just with the animation and, and taking the information from the spline and animating the camera or whatever game object you want to animate. Um, it also deals with how it behaves like the how the orientation works or the animation works. And then we have the actual camera path script which is the actual spline itself and it contains all the information that we're going to use when we animate and, and how the, the curve behaves and so on. So we'll look at the camera path script first and we can see um, we have a here we have a nine modes um, there are actually a few different modes depending on the um, orientation mode we have it set to custom which allows us to set custom orientations um, but say if we chose mouse look then there are no orientations to select, um, so we only have eight modes here. Um, if we went to something like uh, follow path, then we can control the tilt of the camera. Um, we'll go through that shortly. Go back to custom for now. So the path points mode, this is just the basic sort of um, Bezier spline um, mode, although it could be, uh, we, we do have many options now. Uh, for how the spline affects. We've got Bezier, Hermite, Smooth Step, or Linear. Um, but the path points basically define uh, where the path actually goes through your scene. Um, it doesn't control curves or anything like that. So as we can see here, the path cuts through these points. We have uh, 17 points defined in this scene. Um, and with this, you know, we can, you know, we can just basically make sure we know where the where the animation goes through. Um, and as you can see, we have um, various options here. We can add new points, which uh, allows us to add points anywhere on the Bezier curve. Uh, we can also add one to the end, uh, useful for when you're starting up and there's only a couple of points, but you kind of want to just extrapolate out your path along your scene. So um, that kind of does its best to place a new point at the end of the path, somewhere where you might find it useful. And of course, we've got delete points where we can delete points individually. Um, we also have a, a a big list. You can insert points um, in between points here, and it will place it in between two points. We can select it, and it will zoom in, uh, and we can delete points, um, which will obviously remove points. Um, there are various other options here, They're fairly self-explanatory, but um, we can you can check the documentation for information there. So we have control points, which is the second mode, and control points um, is only really available in Bezier um, interpolation because um, Hermite and Smooth Step they just rely on the path points to cut out a path. But Bezier, we actually um, get the option to um, have more control over how these points operate. Um, and we have uh, the reverse one as well. Um, we have two control points per point. And um, that just gives us a lot more control over our curves. We now um, can split the path points so we can create some more interesting curves and have uh, two completely separate um, control points here. Uh, as you can see, you know, we, can, um, we have various options. We can auto place it, which kind of tries to interpolate um, where the control point should go. And we can zero them 
if we want to, it actually removes all curvature from a point. Um, it just basically sets the two control points to zero. Um, can be useful if you want it to stop at a sharp point, um, or if you know you just want to bring the points back to zero and you can we'll start again. Um, and again, you know, we have the same points list for this, uh, where you can insert points and delete points and so on. Um, next we have field of view, which um, obviously is only useful if uh, you are animating a camera. But here we can define the point of view, the field of view of the camera as, as it goes through the scene, um, which is useful for, uh, say, if you want to zoom in a specific object in your animation uh, and so on. Uh, as we can see here, we can select or delete points, and the fields are editable, um, so you can change them here or you can change them uh, on the selected point down here. Um, you can set that it will, when you add new points, it will try and take the default uh, camera value of your scene, um, and you can always set stuff back to default, which is 60 for this scene, which is the standard. Um, Interpolation modes for this is just smooth step linear or no interpolation where you will jump when you reach a, uh, the next field of view point, it will jump to uh, a new field of view. Um, speed is uh, similar to field of view in, in how it works through the scene, but this um, will be used uh, all the time uh, for, for all different kinds of animations. And here we can actually define how fast or slow you want your animation to go at various points. Um, by default, there are no speed points um, in a camera path, and we actually just take the uh, this overall speed value, which is in the animator. Um, but as you can see, we're using the path-based speed values, uh, so that gets blocked out, and we use uh, these ones instead. As you can see, we've defined uh, 16 here. Um, and uh, again, you know, sort of basic interpolation algorithms. You can disable it if you want, um, and then it will start using the animations, uh, the, the, the overall path animation speed. Um, and yeah, you can, you can set them uh, down here as well. You can also uh, set delay points. Again, this, uh, none of these are added um, by default to the path, although we do have a start and end point. Um, but that's more for the ease curves, which we'll see in a minute. But this allows you to set down points in your path where you want there to be a delay. Say you want to stop it for seven seconds, or if you set it to zero, you can actually stop the path indefinitely um, until something or you decide to start it again, maybe with an event or or so on. But they tie into the delay points tie into the um, ease curves because uh, ease curves are good for when you're starting or stopping um, a uh, path, um, you kind of you don't want it to just stop. Usually, you want it to sort of ease into the animation or ease out. Um, so, by default, we have the start and end points, which are general stopping points, and then any delay points that you add in will also be in here. And we have options here to create curves that either you know ease in or, and then we've got events. And events, um, there are two kinds of event. Uh, in all my examples, pretty much, I only use the broadcast event, which uses the C sharp event system and broadcasts the C sharp event. Um, it's a custom event in the animator, and it will uh, send out this string for identification uh, in your scripts. Uh, but there is a different method you can call, and this will actually um, use the send message functionality in. Uh, Unity to uh, call methods of a specific name uh, and these points you can place anywhere and um, as you'll see in this example it's useful for uh, triggering certain events at certain points in your path. Um, finally we have orientation which is for the custom orientation mode and this allows us to orientate our path to wherever we want it to, to, to face during the animation. Um, we have very, a fair few amount of interpolation algorithms for this, um, and cubic is by default because that's the the most uh, the, the, the the most smooth version of the animation. Um, we've also, as you can see, I've added um, uh, orientation indicators in this purple color. Uh, you can turn this on and off. Uh, you can toggle this, and you can toggle how often uh, they get shown. 
uh, but this will allow you to see how your um, how your your path is uh, orientating as it as it goes round. Um, and as as you can see here, you know, the reset angle. You can set it to path direction, um, which will help you out when placing them. You can also um, look at a specific transform. Uh, for specific points, so if one point you always want it to look at some something in your scene, you can set this, and then that will override the angle. Um, and uh, obviously, you can clear it if you if you no longer want to use that. Um, but that could be useful. If we go into um, follow path, that will give us the tilt option, and the tilt option uh, allows us to tilt the camera because follow path, obviously, um, as we go through the scene. We might want to angle it, especially if, say, you're animating a spaceship or something, or even um, the camera itself. You might want to angle it as it goes around corners, so you can actually change um, how it tilts uh, rather than it just remaining upright at all times, like it does by default. And I fi finally, we have uh, options, which is uh, at the moment there's not many, but there probably will be options added over time with the requests from people. At the moment, we can just pick colors um, for the path and the different elements of the path, and you can actually choose to hide the path uh, if you don't want to see it in your scene. And finally, we have the animator, which um, gives us the option to uh, actually uh, preview our scene uh, in the editor. Which is very useful if we uh, if we if we don't want to have to just continuously uh, open up, you know, uh, play our scene to see our changes. Um, by default, main camera is selected the animate object, but you can obviously choose any game object in the scene to animate, and uh, you can actually select animate scene object in editor to see it actually um, change. Live in the scene, uh, we won't. You can see the uh, the actual scene camera being moved here, and uh, if you untick that, it will send it back to where it was um, previously. Um, by default, play and start is uh, ticked, um, but if say you want the path to occur at a later point and have something tell it to start, uh, you deselect that. Uh, and the animation mode is once uh, you. I've actually now included a nice little bit of help text to tell you exactly what these different modes do, um, but they're fairly self-explanatory. And uh, we now have uh, orientation mode, which uh, we have different ways in how the uh, camera will be orientated or the game object will be orientated as it gets uh, animated throughout the spline. And finally, we have normalized path, um, which by default is set to true and probably there's almost no reason why you untick um, that but the camera path does normalize um, the spline uh, to ensure that uh, there is a smooth speed that goes throughout it uh, and it doesn't have the sort of speed up slow downs that you tend to get with a with a, uh, a spline based animation um, so that's everything um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, Thank you very much.